how is everybody doing? It's your boy, Flip Kiki here, your coach of the Hoboken Hall Lucius, and welcome to the grand finals of HDL season four. As you can see, we'll be playing the reigning two time champion, Zubats Outta Hell. If you have not checked out the quarterfinals video, go check that out. More importantly, if you haven't checked out the semifinals video from last week, how I pulled off that game is still beyond me. Go check that shit out. I played the three seed in the quarterfinals. I played the two seed in the semifinals. And now my six seed ass is playing the one seed in grand finals. The most difficult possible playoff run I could have had to go through I am now going through if I pull this off it will undoubtedly be the greatest playoff run in the history of the HTL but I got my work cut out for me because Tyler does not lose to the same person twice unless it's your rune in season one that's the only time he has ever lost to the same person two times in one season and I'm scared I'm most scared because he just simply does not lose these types of games he just finds a way to win every single time and it's almost worse that i beat him when i played him in week two as you could see and it's even another even worse that you know we alternate wins and losses i'm on pace to lose this game in our all-time matchup <clears throat> but as you can see again check that video out at the top right i won 2-0 uh and i won because i brought a scarf spectre and played around it properly i got a little lucky in a few situations and he did play a few things pretty questionably uh, but as you can see, last time he brought Rocky Helmet Skarmory. He brought Crocodile. I don't know what the item was, but I knew it had Stealth Rock. Uh, he brought Zard Y. He brought Specs, Dragapult. He brought Scarf, Sock, and Assault Vest Tentacruel. Last time he had a Raichu with said the Charge Bug, and that's his only difference. A lot of this matchup is going to depend on what he brings, because Tyler's favorite thing to do is run setup and trade. He makes 1v1 sets for certain mons that are that are meant to bait in certain things and punish them. And once those things are dead, his setup mon is meant to clean. That's how he builds. Like, he built Tentacruel as his Spectrier check. He built Skarmory as his every single time B switch in. He built Sock to lure in Prim and then outspeed it, guaranteed, kill it with Thunder Punch, like something like that. This was actually not a very standard team for him when he played me, but I bet you he's going to have a very standard team for me in this game. It's obviously grand fucking finals, so it's going to be quite stressful. Uh, this game's also getting streamed to so the entire server. Uh, there's probably going to be like 10, 11 people watching this game. It's going to be live. There's going to be live commentating this game. I'm going to be sitting there in my call with my ultra hype music in my head and I'm just going to play it like it's a normal game. I just have to play like I've been playing. And if I do that, I'm going to win. If I don't, that'll fucking blow because all of this work, all of this massive win streaking, all of this, you know, playing out of my mind this summer to losing grand finals to the guy that's already won the last two seasons and made it to finals in the first season and lost. So I don't want to lose to him. I would have been fine losing to anyone else. If anyone else was in Grand Finals, this would have been a fun as fuck game. But the fact that he's been to Grand Finals the last three seasons, I can't keep letting him get away with this shit. So I need to beat his ass. So I prepped, again, as hard as I usually do. But the problem with his team is he can bring any six. He can honestly bring any six. He can bring the exact same six he brought last time. He could get rid of Zard Y, and he can bring Lele. He could also get rid of something and bring Lele Charger Bug with webs. He can bring Piloswine instead of Tentacruel and have a bulky Piloswine check. He can bring Grotto to absolutely Stonewall Prim. It all depends on what his setup mon is. If his setup mon is, or if his sweeper Zard, he'll have certain things around it. If it's Dragapult, he'll have certain things around it. If it's Lele, he'll have certain things around it. If it's Lele, he's going to bring webs with Charge Bug. If it's Dragapult, he's going to bring probably the same thing he had. Instead, Dragapult's going to be D-Dance Dragon Darts. If it's Zard, he's going to preserve it better than he did last time. Another big problem is this fucking Crocodile. When I get to the Spectrier, I'll 
talk more about the crocodile but the crocodile has two sets it can run and both of which are problematic because it might be able to trap my spectre but moving on since i've been rambling enough already um we're just gonna move on we're gonna start with my lead uh like i said with the charger bug webs is a problem especially with my team webs is a problem because my team relies on being fast uh as you can see in that speed as well on serena uh, plus 12 creep is going to be very customary in most of these sets because he puts speed in every single one of his mods. Like, he will creep Skarmory to outspeed my max uh, max speed prim. Like, just so he knows it outspeeds. Like, I've seen his pace before. Every single one of his mods has speed investment. There's some things that aren't worth out creeping for me, but I know if he tries to creep something, I'm going to go to 12 speed. So I still out creep the creep. That's just how i'm gonna do it uh serena's max hp it's defensive again uh it has the rest and attack investment because it needs that to oko certain the oko something oh and it needs that attack investment to two co pylosonic evil light or knock off plus power whip gets rid of pylosonic so that's what that attack investments for the rest is in defense because serena needs to be able to possibly eat an eq from crook it needs to take a knockoff from crook um it also needs to be able to take two dragon darts two unboosted dragon darts from dragapult and kill it with knockoff that's the main thing dragapult could try and come in on a switch gets knocked off a dragon darts me i knock it off or i'm at full health he dragon darts me knock it off whatever he has is gone does it again i live i knock him off he's dead serene is mainly my spin my my spinner but that's why I have knockoff because Dragapult might come in and try and spin block my Serena. I don't think he's going to play his Dragapult that aggressively, but if he does, I need knockoff to deal with it, and I do. Uh, no high jump kick and no triple axle here sucks, but I needed taunt because other than that, I had zero way to prevent turn one webs from going down on Charger Bug. I just don't have it besides Murkrow, but I'm not bringing Murkrow to this matchup. Spoiler, it's the same six I've been bringing the fucking for the fucking playoffs this entire time because Mian Chao is too unreliable to do damage especially when there's a prevalent ghost type floating around like um like drag pull i just can't throw high jump kicks out willy-nilly or get caught lacking with a close combat and be forced to switch and then it sets up on me and, my, and i lose i can't do that uh typhlosion would be good for skarmory but it's bad for everything else all to know is great for dragapult but it would get set up on and then i just lose so I'm just bringing the same six. Uh, everything still does a job. The team is still robust, so I don't mind. All I worry about is that it's actually going to be predictable. But the rest of my team still forces prep, so we'll see what happens. Uh, Serene is actually the most straightforward mod in this thing. Uh, I lead it, and then I make the proper switch, and then it comes back in if I need to spin. If it doesn't, it's going to be useful late game. I think late, late in this game, like mid to late game, Serena is going to have to make a key 50 50 prediction. It's going to have to power whip or knock off something on the switch. And if I get it, I win. Calling it now. Moving on, though, to Chomp. Now, I struggled figuring out what I wanted on this Chomp set. And I eventually decided that I'm going to run Assault Vest Guard Chomp. Obviously, a Assault Vest Guard Chomp is meant to deal with Zard Y. Anytime Zard Y is in, Guard Chomp switches in. However, there's only so many times I can do that. Uh, minus defense as well, because I need this speed to outspeed Zard Y with no speed, which I don't think is going to happen. But it's also something I need to outspeed Tentacruel with no speed. A no speed Tentacruel needs to be outsped by this Guard Chomp, because EQ just okos it, even if it's max HP with no defense investment. Originally, I was going to run lead Garchomp with Rocks, Whirlpool, and Earthquake. <laughs> Catch him fucking lacking. I almost had Whirlpool on this anyways to try and trap Skarm and then execute it with Fire Blast. However, Scale Shot is far too good here because I realized if I get a good Scale Shot off on something, Garchomp has a chance to clean, which is really weird to say with <clears throat> barely any attack investment and not even running Adamant or any speed. But if I get a good scale shot prediction off on something, Garchomp can clean. A four hit scale shot were guaranteed kill a Dragapult, which from full, mind you. Four hit scale shot kills Dragapult from full, and Garchomp lives a Draco Meteor from Scarf, and it lives a Draco Meteor for Tibbet Specs. Just saying. Uh, Fire Blast is obviously, obviously for Skarmory, Stone Edge is for Zard Y, EQ's for everything else. 
Scale Shot is a risky click because Garchomp is <clears throat> going to have paper thin defenses, especially because I'm minus defense nature. So Scale Shot only gets clicked if I need to click for Dragapult or if Garchomp is going to have a chance or if Garchomp is like at 20%, I would only be using it for a sack at this point and I can click Scale Shot to kill something and then hand out a healthy amount of chip to something else and then Garchomp dies and then I bring in something to revenge and then hopefully win after that. That's the hope. No promises, but straightforward. Zardwai is in, Garchomp switches in. I set that condition. Um, if he tries to double, I double off of it. it it's a key thing for Chomp. Uh, this also helps Chomp live a Moonblast from Lele and smack it back with EQ. Just, just stuff like that. Beedrill. Beedrill is questionable this matchup. If you remember the last game, every single time Beedrill was in, Skarm came in. And Skarm was handing out Rocky Helmet Ship to Beedrill like it was nobody's business. But I'm going to bring Beedrill again because of that exact thing. Beedrill's existence forces Skarm to be useless until Beedrill dies. Beedrill's existence resets neutral every single time. Beedrill being in means he's going to go Skarm. Which means the first time I knock it off. I don't even you I don't U turn the first time. I knock it off the first time because I know how he's gonna play it. If I get burnt by knocking it off, that sucks. The only time I don't knock off is if Beatrice in on Zardwai. That would be bad. So I'm gonna U-turn in that case. But other than that, I mean I could also P jab the Zardwai. But he's gonna go Skarmory nine times out of ten. First time I knock it off. And then I get to U-turn out for free, probably as he roosts. I would U-turn out most likely see i would you turn out in spectre but i can't because again i will i will get to that when i get to spectre but skarmory's existence makes beedrill reset neutral or makes Skarmory come in to reset neutral every single time and when skarmory is dead beedrill goes fucking wild so i'm still bringing beedrill beedrill does like if beedrill wasn't coming it was going to be a scarf me and show and scarf me and show is more unreliable than beedrill there's just so much more prediction that's required and i can't afford to get locked into something when he always runs setup if i'm locked into something and he gets a free setup on me i'm gonna lose so i can't afford that so it's just standard basic bitch b drill run pjab knock off u-turn with speed crep for back speed dragapult max attack and then the rest in hp like it's beedrill so hopefully the big dick b can claim a few more souls before you know the season's over we'll see uh i'll be playing him like a normal beedrill and that's about it prim pretty standard prim uh i've been liking call mine prim i've been liking substitute on prim recently but that is not what i need this time this time i need defensive prim defensive prim is the name of the game defensive prim needs to eat something from crook defensive prim needs to eat physical attacks and special attacks from dragapult this prim can live a modest specs t-bolt it takes like 75 percent max for modest specs t-bolt so if dragapult is still alive prim cannot drop below 75 percent if prim drops below 75 percent when dragapult is still alive i've technically lost the game because at any given moment he can bring specs t-bolt and just kill my prim and that's horrible. If Prim dies, I basically lose. So I can't have that because Prim also helps deal with Lele. Prim also helps deal with Zardwai to an extent because he could just solo beat me, but I can still scald him for decent damage. I have Toxic. Toxic hands out great fucking damage uh, all around. Um, toxic and Dragapult would be nice. Toxic and Piloswine would be great. That's also why Primarine is here because this can help deal with pile of swine especially with toxic and i have lefties um i wish prim had a reliable way to heal a little bit better than just lefties but it is what it is moonblast will oko a drag bolt scald for everything else uh that's really it uh defensive prim also takes less damage from sock i don't want prim to get knocked off i need to avoid prim getting knocked off if possible however i don't know how likely that's going to be uh prim getting knocked off would suck but it might be one of my first things that i need to get knocked off but i do have a knockoff switch in however it's my crocodile knockoff switch in not my sock knockoff switch in so it really just depends but it's my man bronzong colberberry bronzong i almost ran light clay i almost ran lefties but i'm running colberberry this bronzong went through many many 
many variations as the chomp because I needed to figure out what rocks were going on. And originally rocks were on chomp, then they were on bronzong, then we were on chomp, then they were on bronzong again. Rocks being down is so important because he obviously has a mid Charizard Y on the other side and that can't run boots. So if rocks are down, Zard Y is gonna, Zard Y can only come in once theoretically during the game only wants to do something and the next time it tries to come in it dies so it can only come in once so i need rocks down as soon as physically possible bronzong changes bronzong shifts the pace of the game especially with max hp max speed dev bronzong deals with anything lele wants to do looks heavy slam if it's spec not specs if it's calm mind shadow ball i click heavy slam until the scary thing goes away and then i go into b if Bronzong dies in that situation. B press is for Crook. Rocks are for rocks and then reflect. I was gonna run dual screens, but I realized Bronzong was not gonna get the chance to put up both screens. So the situation in which I click reflect, Bronzong is mid to late game and Bronzong is in on Crook. And Bronzong is not yet knocked off. Crook is going to try and knock off Bronzong or, Bron or Bronzong is low and Crook can't kill it. I'm going to click Reflect as Crook knocks me off. Bronzong is going to kill the Crook. He's going to bring something in. He kills the Bronzong. I sack Bronzong to whatever he brings in. Spectre is going to come in with anywhere, I would say, from two to four turns of Reflect. As long as there's two turns, that's optimal because then Spectre is going to two co anything on his team. He's behind screens. If he stalls out screens, he has to take massive chip on his, he has to trade that for massive chip on his team. He's, and if he stalls out the screens, I still have other options. Spectre optimally kills something, gets the Grim Nay boost, and then cleans from there after it's behind Reflect. Because Spectre behind Reflect, even if Crook is still alive, does really well because it lives whatever Crook tries to do. It lives anything a physical Dragapult tries to do. It lives Pyloswine moves. It lives, doesn't live Zard moves because Zard's not gonna be physical. It helps against a, skull, a Sock knockoff as well. So that's key, but I do need to get rocks down. And <sighs> rocks are a little weird <laughs> to get in with, but Here's where I talk about the Crook more. Crook is going to run one of two sets, or at least it should be. Crook is either going to be Assault Vest or it's going to be Choice Scarf. If I know it's Choice Scarf and he is locked into EQ, free rocks. It's just free rocks every time. I switch him Bronzong, I click rocks. He can't, he can't hit me. Rocks on the switch. I have options. I have a Prim. I have a Garchomp I could switch into. I And even a Serena. I go into one of those three things whenever he switches in. It's really that simple. So he needs to bring Tentacruel to Rapid Spin, or he needs to bring Skarm to Defog. Those are his only two options for removal. I mean, he has Defog on Zard Y, but who runs Defog on Zard Y? He's going to be Defogging on Skarm, or he's going to be spinning on Tentacruel. It's just one of the two things. Culberberry means Crook can't really do shit to Bronzong, because Knockoff's going to do 35 to 40% the first time, and then it won't be knocking off any items. So then it's just going to do like 20 to 30 ish. Well, that's, that's about it. Brown Brownzong is just vibing in that case. That defense investment guarantees a body press 2 co on a no HP crook, I think. That's about it. But moving in to Spectre, running specs again, right? I have Hex Willow Nasty just in case Spectre gets knocked off. But this is going to be clicking Shadow Ball first and foremost. If Prim is able to hand out enough Toxics, which I don't know if it will be, that I would be shocked if it hands out that many Toxics where it's more viable to click Hex. I'll be clicking Shadow Ball 100% of the time. But I have Nasty Hex Willow in case Spectre gets knocked off. But that's not the plan. That speed is for Zard Y. There's no point in trying to creep a Dragon Pulp because I just can't. So that speed is for Zard Y, and I can afford Modest with some HP investment. Uh, you'd say, why would not you just run Defense if you're going to mainly be getting hit against Crook? It depends, because if I deal with Crook well, Spectre is going to be there late, and it might have to deal with special moves. So I think HP is the safer investment there. Here's the problem with Crook. Optimally, 
and what i was doing last game is Star skarm comes in on b i pivot on the skarm i go spectre spectre does like 60 percent to skarm with scarf shadow ball so it's going to be doing like 80 to 95 percent with spec shadow ball but what he can do is he can just bring in crocodile take 35 percent from my spec shadow ball and now spectre is pursuit trapped Ba-dum, ba-dum. Now Spectre doesn't Oko it, or doesn't kill it if it's in, if it's max HP. It won't kill it. Or if I try and switch out on Pursuit Trapped. Or if he Scarf, he outspeeds me and knock off Oko's me. Or if he's, like I said, Assault Vest, he lives, and then he knock, knocks me off or pursues me if I'm switching out. There's Spectre just does not win. So, the only way I pivot into Spectre here after skarm is coming on b is two things a i know crocodile set and i know spectre is safe and i know crocodile doesn't have pursuit or it's not a soft vest or it's not scarf which is highly unlikely or crocodile's in range and i will be assuming a solid vest on a switch to be safe crocodile's in range which is like 30 to 35 percent that is it other than that spectre fucking cleans or it does big damage mid game and i need to preserve prim to deal with dragapult late i don't know how the game is going to end that's the one problem victory absolutely get clean with victory doesn't deal with dragapult well Spectre just kind of dies with dragapult's physical spectre kills dragapult it's I mean, I mean, that's it, man. Like, the, my last prep of the season, going to the grand finals game against someone that really knows what they're doing. I just don't want to choke, and I want to play solidly. That's all I want to do, really. Like, I just need to do, I just need to handle business. Go in, handle my business, and I think I'll be okay. Play the way I've normally been playing, keep my head on my shoulders, and just relax all i need to do so without further ado let's get to the grand finals game see you there hi hello uh this is probably not what you were expecting uh for those that are in the discord you were already a know what happened in this game and b so my announcement uh for those that don't welcome to the post-mortem replay of the grand finals game because uh as you'll see i'll be f uh flipping over to clips of the live commentary uh at certain points when certain things happen but my personal um standards for the commentary were not met for what I was doing during this grand finals game. So I decided it would be, it would just end the season on a better note. If I replayed this game myself with things that I know now, uh, and what I should have done in certain situations, uh, and not put it out with all the commentary because that would have been painful for you guys to watch. Uh, and probably a little bit boring. Um, I'm going to flip again. Like I said, I'm going to flip back to certain reactions and my final thoughts at that moment for the end of this video but i'm gonna keep it as hype as possible still i'm still gonna maintain all the commentary i'm still going to have the hype music turn on it's probably already started by now as the first mons are about to come out uh analyzing this matchup just gonna go, go straight into it analyzing this matchup um i was not expecting Lele and Charizard to come. I was expecting Lele plus Webs, Lele plus Pyro Swine with no Charizard. Charizard coming through me actually a bit for a loop, but these are, to be honest, his six best mons. So him bringing his six best mons should not have been surprising. So knowing this, Lele is probably Scarf here. Dragapult's going to stay in the back. It's going to be set up. Lele's most likely Scarf in this situation, which means... Crook is most likely here for defensive utility, is what I should have realized. Uh, Lele and Zard being here for speed along with Dragapult means Scarf Crook is not a probable option. It's probably either Assault Vest Crook or some sort of weird utility Crook, and Scarf should not have been a thing. 
I should not have thought about Scarf Crook once I saw this type of matchup, first and foremost. Other than that, I can play through roughly the same exact plan. So we're gonna go into it on turn one. I got the lead that I wanted, right? Serena on Crook turn one was good for me, right? Because that's free knockoff. He's not staying in, even if he is Rindo, she wasn't. Even if he was Rindo, he does want to stay in and take Power Whip like that because he can't really hit Serena back except for knockoff. So this is a free knockoff for me. Even if he goes Tentacruel, I knock off Tentacruel's item. Whether it's Assault Vest, whether it's Black Sledge, I knock it off, which is going to be really good for me. Turn one knockoff on a Shucka Berry is important. Now, what Shucka Berry should have told me in this situation is that he was scared of Chomp. And now this is supposed to be his Chomp answer, which means Chomp can go in. Problem is, I didn't bring Offensive Chomp. If I brought Offensive Chomp in this matchup, I might have done a little bit better. But I I'm trying to not spoil the outcome of the game for those that don't know. But if I brought an Offensive Chomp, it would be a lot better, especially since I just knocked off a Shucka Berry. Knocking off a Shucka Berry here is absolutely huge because that shows he was afraid of Chomp, which means uh Lele probably doesn't have anything for it that means Crook was not meant for Chomp this was that means Skarm is still going to be a Chomp answer and Dragapult probably has something to do with Chomp and not everything else that's what that should have been telling me but the knockoff here is still nice I'm obviously not going to stay in on this thing because I don't know what this thing is going to be especially because it was Shuka that shows it probably wasn't fully defensive which means it might have sludge wave especially for prim so I did not want to leave this in have Serena get poison move because to be honest Serena can't hit it anyway so my best play here is either switch and B on the poison move or pray he doesn't scald burn me he predicts the Beedrill switch goes for a scald and thankfully I'm not punished and I don't get burned that's good for me uh then he's going to go Skarm obviously B is in Skarm is in 100% of the time I am going to go for a pretty much of a bold read because if he stayed in and thought he could tank a, could tank a drill run, scald me again, uh, B might have gotten burned. But he goes Skarm, and I predict the Sarm switch, switch and knock off. Turn three, I'm in a very good position. He has two items that are knocked off. Uh, this exposes leftovers on Skarm, which means it wasn't Rocky Helmet, which is a little bit surprising, to be honest. No Rocky Helmet on the Skarm is still surprising. So I think Roos Rocky Helmet Defog, or, or I think Tentacruel is a spinner is actually a, bit better, a little bit better. But Roost, Roost uh, Rocky Helmet Skarm is just too good for him. But Lefty's not getting knocked off here is interesting. Uh, so I still don't know if he has Roost. He probably still has Roost regardless. But I knocked him off. Uh, I haven't done any calcs at this point yet to do any uh, interesting math. I think I did a calc for Crook to figure out that Crook was not defensive, so I knew he was defensive. I still was... Oh, no. Crook... I didn't do any damage to Crook. I did a calc on Tentacruel. Figure out Tentacruel was max HP, but it did not have any defense investment, so that was important. Uh, this calc on Skarmory told me it was max HP, but did not have any defense investment, and that was very interesting because Spadef Skarm is a huge problem because all I have for Spadef Skarm is Fire Blast on Garchomp. That is it. I have Scald on Prim, kinda, and I do have Spectre Air, but the problem is Spectre Air kills this, but it gets Pursuit Trapped by Crook. So, my best option here is, is to U-Turn out, because I still can't hit this thing regardless with B. So I'm gonna U-Turn out into Spectre Air. Now, this might seem like a stupid idea, but I wanna see if he's gonna try and Pursuit Trap me, because if he brings in Crook, that screams Crook has Pursuit. So Spec is in 100% here to double. I'm going back out, into Prim, or I'm going back out into Serena here, and I'm gonna try and see if he brings in Crook. And he roosts. Oh, that was that was on the switch. But then I switch into Prim, and he stays in, but he misses a Toxic. Now that told me at that moment that maybe Crocodile doesn't have Pursuit. He didn't switch. He didn't go for it turn four. You're in a grand finals game. You bring pursuit on your crocodile. Your eyes get wide once you see you have that situation. And especially if I stay in. He didn't go for it. So that made me think he didn't have it. Uh, missing the toxic on prim is nice here. I just dodge one turn of toxic damage. Not that big of a deal. But I know this is Spadef Skarmory. Roost toxic Spadef Skarmory is a problem. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming Brave Bird. And I don't know the fourth move. Maybe Defog. Uh, if Tentacruel is not his spinner. I didn't know what Tentacruel was meant to be doing. It might have been... I think Tentacruel might have been his spinner. I, I mean, I have his pace, but I'm going off of what I'd be thinking 
in the moment because again this game was also over a week ago as i'm recording this toxic on print misses not that big of a deal uh i'm gonna stay in and probably scald and eat the toxic on print because there's not much else i can do and that's exactly what i do a burn here would be nice i get it so even though his lefties are knocked off he can roost uh, at this point i was actually worried i might have the pp stall his roost but i can't do that with prim because prim's toxic now and i don't have lefties so his prim is rindo berry and rindo berry is looking pretty fucking useless right now so i'm in a little bit of an issue here oh no prim wasn't rindo berry was prim rindo I totally forget. Well, Prim was Rindo semifinals. Prim here. What the fuck was the Prim set? Hold on. I think it might have just been. Is it just left? I'll know right now. Oh no. I don't remember. You guys know what the Prim set is. I forget. Spectre Air comes in now. I bring it in again. This was the play that changed the entire game. I bring in Spectre again, because I'm realizing now Spectre is the only way I can kill this Garmory. And now that I'm in, I have to make a choice. Am I going to double again to be cautious, or am I going to stay in and click a move on this and see if Crocodile comes in or not? Now, you guys that have watched this whole video at this point have watched through this team builder, and you watch me say multiple times, do not at all costs until I know the exact Crocodile set do not click a ghost move on Skarmory. Now, <laughs> look at what I did. He clicks Roost. Gets burnt. Crocodile comes in. And I click Hex. And it does 32%. At that moment, <laughs> I realized... I have lost my Spectre. Uh, which is fucking horrible. Because now, Garchomp is my only way to kill Skarmory. Garchomp is going to get two chips trying to kill the Skarmory. And Garchomp is going to be able to kill everything else. Turn 8. And I low-key have already lost the game. Uh, <laughs> you, you guys are just going to get to watch. Uh, Spec get Pursuit Trapped in all its glory. And it's gone. I could have Hexed again. In all honesty, I could have hexed again. Why well, I decided not to, because this thing was dead regardless. I could have hexed again, thinking about it. At this point, I could have just taken my L. P Pursuit when I'm not switching out isn't going to kill me. I could have hexed again for more chip. But, you know. Spec is dead, which is fucking horrible. That's like the worst possible thing that could have happened with a Spidef Skarmory still alive, a Tapu Lele that's going to run around, a Charizard that I need to outspeed, and a Crook that is at 68%. That's really fucking bad. <laughs> Cut to my live reaction of this happening. Um, does he go Crook? Oh, I can Hex right now. Ooh. Oh, he went Crook now. Fuck. 32%. Okay. Huge, 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 huge. I was, I was bad. That was horrible. Man, he won that 50-50 the second time. What'd that do? 32. 32% hex. He's Scarf. He's Scarf and he's about to Pursuit Trap me. He just Pursuit Trapped me. That's bad. Uh, I just got Pursuit Trapped. Yep. Knew it. Fuck! Horrible play by me. I lost a 50-50 the second time. Uh, that might be a loss, actually. I might have just lost. Might have just lost. Because now I can't kill Skarm. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. I'm really sorry. Yeah, you see how upset I was? <laughs> the, the instant 
soul-crushing voice change of just pure defeat. Yeah, at that point, I've already tilted, and I've basically lost this game in my own head now that this has happened. Which is fucking tragic, because, you know, this is the championship game. But that's pretty tragic. This game is still, however, in this state, winnable. Because I still have Beedrill, and I still have ways to kill the Skarm. And if Beedrill's alive, I can still kill Lele, and I can chip the Charizard. P-Jab will obviously kill the Charizard from certain range if it's chipped. And I can kill Dragapult if he's not Scarf. So this game was still winnable in this state. Spec is dead. Now, now that Spec is dead, I have two options. I obviously picked Pedro, but I had two options here. Or three, to be honest. Do I go Serena? Do I go Prim? Or do I go Pedro? Now that this has established its pursuit, I'm assuming Assault Vest still, which is kind of the wrong assumption. Or it's not the wrong assumption, but it's a weird assumption. After this calc, I should have known that it's not Assault Vest. So I could have probably afforded to go Prim here. Because I just need this Crocodile out of my fucking face. To be honest, I mean, knowing what I know now, Beedrill was the wrong play. However, in this moment, Beedrill is the right play. Uh, I could have gone Prim and clicked Flip Turn on the Switch. If Prim has Flip Turn. I forget the Prim set, I'll be honest. But B here, this is a free U-turn, and I get to reset neutral with a pivot is what I thought. <laughs> now what actually happened was this. I clicked U-turn, he's Tanga Berry, he lives, and because I clicked U-turn, he clicks Pursuit again and B's dead. That's fucking horrible. <laughs> That's really fucking bad. <laughs> um, now Beedrill is dead. Of all things he is, he's Tanga Berry. Scarf, which I should have known was not coming anymore is off the table a salt vest was still very much on the table but i should have known from that calc he wasn't salt vest so what the fuck was he he obviously wasn't lefties maybe black glasses maybe he was pasho berry for prim i could have eat i could have honestly seen water berry or fairy berry iron tail for prim because that's something tyler would definitely do but instead he was tanga berry pursuit for bidro not even for Spectre. Pursuit was for Spectre, kind of, but this was honestly with Beedrill in mind. So, there goes my Beedrill. And now, this game state is basically unwinnable from here, in my opinion. You'll see what happens that I actually bring it a little bit close. But now that Beedrill is dead, now I have no way of reliably killing Lele outside of Bronzong, and I have no way to pressure the Zard, besides Garchomp being fast. Garchomp needs a scale shot up or I lose because Prim can't kill Zard. Serena can't kill Zard. And Brong obviously, uh, Zong obviously fucking can't kill Zard. So Chomp is now responsible for killing basically everything on this team. Besides the Lele, because that's Brong's on shot. That's it. That's, that's the only option I have left. I have to get a scale shot up and pray. But the problem is, Drag Pulse is going to outspeed me if I have one scale shot up. Most likely. Uh, if, if he's a fast one. Uh, Zard is going to outspeed me neutrally anyway. I have no way to Oko Lele. I need Fire Blast for Skarmory, and he's going to Toxic me, and I have no way to heal. And I still have to click EQ on the Tentacruel, and that's going to take a chip of Toxic damage. That's my problem. To be honest, I don't know what my best play here was. It might have been Prima Serena, but instead I went Chomp. Because, to be honest, this is a free scale shot. Regardless. To be frank... It was not the best because Garchomp is or something else is going to take chip because I'm making this decision. This is his free scale shot because he's not going to switch to hard Lele here and preserve a 16% growth. Crook did its job. So I'm going to go for the scale shot here. I'm going to kill it and I'm going to apply pressure. Re revealing scale shot at this point may have not been the best idea. I'm going to be honest. I should have gone Prim. Because if I go Prim, he goes Tentacruel. Actually, no. He goes... <laughs> He goes Tentacruel, and then I have to switch Chomp into a Scald, and then Chomp might get burned. So, if I go Serena, he lets me kill him. He goes Zard. I don't think I sack Serena. I have to go Chomp, and then I get the Scale Shot off, scale shot off on Chomp, but then Skarm probably kills me after the Zard chip. And that's also assuming he plays that way. It's 
Mm. Everything had to go right for me to win at this point. Crooked Isle is now dead. Garchomp is plus one. He brings in Scar. Obviously, I can't hit the Scar except for Fire Blast. And I need the chip to Scar. I get a crit Fire Blast. At this moment, I that's exactly what I needed. I'm over the moon. Uh, he's going to Toxic me back, which is obviously a big deal because I'm Assault Vest and not Lefties. And then I'm going to get another crit Fire Blast, which is even funny. It was even funnier. But that crit 100% mattered. This game would have been a lot more one-sided if I didn't get that crit Fire Blast. Uh, I don't remember how excited I was when I got that crit, so we're going to cut to me getting that crit. I don't know if I could have gone for this now, but I have to kill this Skarm somehow. Thank you for the crit. Thank you for the crit. Thank you for the fucking crit. Thank you for the crit. My goodness, thank you. This, does he let this die? Ooh. Oh, he let it die. He let it die. Oh, double crit? Double crit? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Okay. Okay, Chomp's doing a thing. Chomp's doing a thing. This lives a Lele hit. This lives a Lele hit. Okay. This also lives something from Dragapult. This also lives something from Dragapult. This is real. Hold on. Chomp might just clutch this shit out. It depends on what he brings in. It all depends on what he brings in. So yeah, got to crit Fire Blast. Skarmory is dead. However, big, big deal. Chomp is poisoned. And Chomp can't win this game from being poisoned like this. Because he has three or four turns of poison left. He's going to most likely get outsped by... He's going to get outsped by Dragapult. Because I have zero speed investment in this Chomp. I'm going to outspeed Zard. But I don't have anything to kill Lele. So I'm not going to be able to Oko Lele. Lele is going to do too much chip on the Diet of Toxic. And then that's just it. That's just game. So I need to switch Chomp out somehow. And I'm only at 82%. So I need to switch Chomp out. He goes Tentacruel. Which in this case was a really weird switch for him. Because Chomp is clearly faster than this. And this Tentacruel doesn't have any defense investment. I did the calc and was like... Earthquake just kills, and even if he goes in Chomp, I just Stone Edge the next turn. So I'm gonna Earthquake, and it dies. In hindsight, that might not have been the best idea, because I'm gonna take a big chip from Toxic now this turn. But I will take a dead Tentacruel, because Chomp at 63% can theoretically still win. If Lele is dead first, Chomp can still win. As At least that's what I think right now. Right, Chomp has to get a scale shot off somehow, not take damage from Zard, and then eat whatever Dragapult throws at him. Still doable, but it's going to get a little dicey. I'm actually winning now at this point in the game. I'm up 4-3, but it's... I have stuff that can't kill his other stuff. Lele is in, and I have no way to kill this, Ch to kill this Zard Y outside of Chomp at this moment that's still alive. So, that's the problem. I can kill, I can beat Dragapult and Lele with my last three months. I can beat Pult with Serena and Prim, and I can beat Lele with Zong and, and Serena. However, what I can't beat is that fucking Charizard. So I need Chomp alive for the Zard. So all he has to do is kill or play around the Chomp properly and preserve his Zard and he wins. So obviously the switch here is going to be Bronzong. I'm not going to stay in. I'm going to go into Bronzong. He clicks Moonblast. Good for me. That is great. That is a great turn for me, okay? Bronzong is now in. Now, this is probably one of the most pivotal turns of the game. The question here is, does he go into Zard? Or does he stay in and click Shadow Ball? Because I don't know. And I'm assuming Lele is choiced. Nine times out of ten, Lele is Specs or Scarf. So I'm going to assume a choice Lele. So I'm thinking he's going to stay in. Or he, he can't keep clicking Moonblast on this. This Lele is going to die. He's going to go into Charizard right now. If, I realized, if I go into Chomp here, and he switches into Charizard, I win the game. Because, I click Scale Shot on Chomp. Or, or no, I skip, click Scale Shot on Charizard. Charizard hits me, I take, like, no damage. I'm now faster than the Charizard, I click Stone Edge. I click Stone Edge, Zard dies. I should be alive after that Toxic, then he brings in Lele or Dragapult, he takes his pick. If Lele's in, I EQ. Do a big chip to Lele, die. I bring in Prim. Prim theoretically closes the game from there. 
If Prim doesn't close the game, I have Serena, and I still actually have Browns up. I think I win in that situation. So if I switch to Chomp here and he switches to Zard, I win. And in this type of scenario, especially when I've lost my spec of my B like that, that's the play I'm going to make. Because if I have a 100% chance win-con situation, if I make a proper prediction, I'm going to make it. And especially when this Lele is, I'm assuming choice, because you assume choice for a Lele, is click the Moonblast and it's in on a Bronze on You're going to switch to your fucking Charizard. And he stayed in. I switched to Chomp. And this motherfucker stayed in and clicked Shadow Ball. A, the Lele's not choiced. Fuck me. And B, he stayed in. If I stayed in and clicked Heavy Slam there, uh, Bronzong takes like 40%. Then I click Heavy Slam again. He probably sacks his Lele in that situation. Or he just goes Zard. I have to sack my Bronzong to Zard. I go Chomp. Chomp clicks Scale Shot for free. And then I should sweep from there. But that's not the case. Now my Chomp is in. It's taken 16% of chip, and now it's going to take toxic damage. I have now lost, actually. Because now, Chomp cannot take a hit from Charizard reliably and survive two turns of toxic before it can kill the other two months. I thought there was no chance that happened. And it, it happened. It was a bold play. Don't get me wrong, it was a bold play. But I saw the option that Charizard switched in as I switched in Chomp by 1. Which I'm pretty sure is true. And I did it. And, you know. Here we are. So now I have to panic and go back to Bronze Zone. Ch Chomp's at 40%. I need to kill this Zard as soon as physically possible. And he should know that he shouldn't be bringing Zard in at all. Moonblast in on Bronze Zone. I'm going to click a Steel move and just get rid of this fucking thing. Uh, I said GG, I think, which, to be honest, I think it, that's still, like, I'm pretty sure I lost at this point, which is, which is fair. Doing the math here, I'm pretty sure I lose, no matter what now, if he plays competently, obviously, which I'm going to assume he does. Heavy Slam does not kill. It was actually a 50, it was a hard 50-50 roll, which actually worked out in my favor, because I Heavy Slam here, and then he brings in Zard, and Zard actually just... No, Zard doesn't actually just win, because then I go chomp the next turn, he eats something, I stone edge him, Zard dies, and Prim or Serena can one him pull. So he brings in Pult, kills Chomp. Well, if I killed him here, I'm fine. But I don't kill him. Because Bronzong's dead. And this thing is still fucking alive. So my best option here, I think, is going Prim. Is it not? Yeah, I go Prim. Prim has to get rid of this thing. He clicks Psy Shock on Prim. I flip turn. In all honesty. Eh. Eh. It's debatable. Because now I have to go Chomp and now he picks what he wants. If I went to Prim here, if he went Zard. Ooh. Did flip turning lose me the game there? Let's be real with this. I thought there was also a chance he preserved Lele for Chomp. If I don't flip turn and I kill Lele, he most likely goes Zard to Solar Beam me. I think that's a fair assumption. Chomp has now taken another turn of toxic damage. So I, in this situation, Uh, the Serena 1v1, this drag pull. Now I'm going to look at what he sent me, because... Now I'm, like, kind of mad at myself, because I feel like this, the flip turn actually lost me the game. We're, we're gonna actually going to look at his team now, because... Oh, sorry if I had Reflect. I actually clicked Reflect, he's fine. I mean, drag was D-Dance. So, if I stay in with Prim, and just Scald the Lele, he goes Zard. I have to sack Prim to Zard. Yes. Actually, no, I don't sack Prim to Zard. No, I do. Because two knockoffs kills the Dragon Ball. Guys, I threw here. Flip turning was the throw. I don't know why I flip turned. Because I wanted to get in the chomp for free, but he takes toxic damage. 
I should have killed the Lele. Lele dies. Prim comes in. Right? If he brings in Zard, I sack Prim. I bring in Chomp. And I click Stone Edge. He has to stay in. Then, I have to see if Chomp lives. Uh, I'm pretty sure Chomp lives it. Did he live a Solar Beam from Zard? He was modest. Gee, I don't know. <laughs> I don't feel like doing the calc right now, live, but he might have lived the Solar Beam for 40%. We'll see. Actually, fuck it. We'll do the calc right now. You guys are in this for the long haul for me anyway. We're going to do this calc right now. 128, 244. Okay. Garchomp was 128, 244. HP, 244. Spadef was 128, and I was a plus Spadef nature. Right? Charizard Y. He was modest. That motherfucker had Solar Beam. There was a chance I lived if I was still at 40%. I had a 44% chance to die. Now, if I lived and I clicked Stone Edge on that motherfucker, even at zero attack investment, he would have died. I would die to Toxic. Then it's one-on-one. -on -one. It's Serena on Dragapult. And I think Serena 1v1s this Dragapult. His Dragapult only has 96 HP. My Serena has 76 attack. Serena with 76 attack. Uh, was I adamant at all? No. Serena with 76 attack. 252 and 168 defense with a plus defense nature. Against Dragapult with 96 HP. I didn't have this, but yeah, I think I just, I win. Uh, so knock off with an item does 64 to 76, and then knock off with no item does 43 to 51. I win, actually. If I, if he stays in and lets me, he lets me kill Layla. If he goes Dragapult, he can't do that because Prim just Moonblasts him and the Dragapult dies. Then he brings in Chomp to revenge the Prim. I, or he brings in the Zard to revenge the Prim. Then he has to hit the 44% roll on the Chomp. If he hits it, he wins. If he doesn't, I win. I had a 44, or not even a 44. I had a 56% chance to win this game from right here. Actually, I had a 56% chance to win this game right here. And I did not take it. If I Scald, Lele dies. He brings in Dragapult. I click Moonblast, the Dragapult goes bye-bye. He brings in Zard, Solar Beams my Primarina. Oh no, he puts up Reflect, Solar Beams, then Solar Beams my Primarina. No, it doesn't matter, because I get two Scalds off him on that point, and the Stone Edge still kills through the Reflect. He brings in, I kill this, he brings in Zard. Solar Beams my Primarina. Or, or if he puts up the Reflect regardless. I bring in Chomp. He goes for the Solar Beam. Right? Weather Ball, Dragon Pulse, Solar Beam. Oh, he had Dragon Pulse. Oh, wait, hold on. I'm... <laughs> it doesn't fucking matter, because he had Dragon Pulse. I die. Oh, yeah. It, it doesn't matter, because he, he's clicking Dragon Pulse there. Not a... This is awkward. See, this is what happened. Like, I wouldn't have assumed he had Dragon Pulse. Right? It what was that? 128 Spadef plus Spadef nature? Yeah, I don't I don't live it. And I'm not outspeeding it. So yeah, I actually did lose. From here I'm even dead. <laughs> I'm so sorry for wasting your guys' time. But you see where my thought process was. I have to grasp at fucking straws to win this game from this point because I let my Spectre Air and my Beedrill die. Because I'm bad. So now you understand where my thought process is at this game, because 
I was trying everything I could. I think I figured out some sort of win scenario from this when I watched the replay. Um, so we're going to roll with what I actually did. We flipped our into Chomp. I go Chomp. He goes Dragapult. Now, here's where things get interesting. He Psychic Fangs. Ooh, Rough Skin. Ouchie. Scale Shot. I live at 1% and this motherfucker dies. But I take toxic damage. If that Skarmory didn't fucking toxic me, I win. Because I click Stone Edge on this Charizard and the game is over. But I died a toxic. Now. If I went hard Serena. Right? If I went hard Serena on this Dragon Darts right here. Hear me out. I go hard Serena on this Dragon Dart. Serena's in. And then I double back to Chomp. Oh no. No, I just lose from here. I, what was the weird game state that I thought I win, theoretically? Because I remember watching the stream back and thinking I win. I thought I won from a situation. No, it, it's it's just completely over if he plays it normally. Because he switches in Zard on the Serena. He doesn't let Serena kill Dragpole. So, that's the game right there. Uh, I, I was definitely, like, apologizing in chat a lot. Um, I might have cut to some other things, but I'm grasping at straws at this point trying to figure out how to beat this. I needed, like, a wacky crit or something here. I, I did, couldn't even get a wacky crit. Like, even if I did wacky crit, uh, phew, doesn't do anything. Um, unironically, if I had... No, not even... Oh, yeah, Prim, or this, he had, like, not click Weather Ball. <laughs> I'm gonna Dynamax my Prim, actually, <laughs> as the game ends. So, technically, I lost to a DQ, but we don't care, because Prim was dying anyway. Um, he's gonna solar beam, and that's the game. Uh, so I lose the championship game 1 0 to a 56% charge. If Spectre is alive at the end, that's a free win. <laughs> Unironic free win if Spectre is alive at the end there. But it's not. The fact that I still brought this to a 1-0 astounds me. I don't know how I did that, especially with those two things. I, he let a lot die of Chomp. He played his sacks correctly, to be honest. He, you get five sacks for a reason, and he played them correctly. But yeah, pretty shitty way for the season to end. Well, to be honest, season ends with Prim dying. Poetic, I'm going to say. Uh, Crocodile gives me a run for my money again. I've lost two Mons to Tangaberry. I've lost Beedrill twice to Tangaberry Crocodile now, or just to Tangaberry. Shout out to Kevin. And you could see there were scenarios for me to win. Uh, but there was just like, there was a scenario for me to win if he didn't bring this random ass move. If he doesn't bring Toxic on Skarm, I win. If he brings the Crook sets I was predicting, I think I do a lot better if it's not fucking Tangaberry. If he doesn't forget that uh, Tentacruel dies and I actually play the Chomp card later, I win. <laughs> If Bronzong uh, hits the roll on Lele, I do a lot better. If <laughs> Dragapult clicked Draco there instead of Dragon Darts, I actually do a lot better. Or I have enough HP maybe to not die there. I think I was taking 25% actually. I don't remember. But like, just those little things. I don't switch Chomp in. To that random shadow ball, it might have enough HP to live the dragon pulse. How about that one? That's something to chew on right there. Actually, let's uh let's do the math here. That's something I'm figuring out right now. If I don't switch Chomp in to that stupid little dragon pulse, to that stupid little thing, and he stays at 63%. I eat it and I win. I'm fine. I could even switch in to that random fucking... I can even switch in off the flip turn now. And I'm fine. So, those are the tiny little things that just barely added up to the loss that I still almost won. But again, that's 
just how it is. Uh, 1-0 loss in Grand Finals. Ends the crazy run. Probably one of my last shots of Gen 8 to win a championship. This close. This close. I'm obviously in better spirits now because I've had a week to think about it, and it is what it is. I was very much not happy when this happened. You could tell from my tone and some of the stuff. Uh, I was a little, uh, I was a little sad, obviously, after this happened. But I do, I do want to cut to my in moment closing thoughts because obviously the post mortem closing thoughts aren't going to hit as home as how I was feeling in the moment. So hope you guys liked this post mortem commentary of me just spewing everything. There was probably a lot of technical and like thought, <laughs> thought moments going on here. I definitely gave this a bit more of a like a deeper advanced analysis than I would have for any normal game. I would have just ran through it and recapped what happened, but. For a game of this quality, I wanted to give a very detailed, professional, like, advanced analysis. And, like, I've been talking extremely fast for 36 minutes now. And I still could have gone into even more detail on this game. That's just the beauty of how detailed competitive Pokemon can get sometimes. So, from present day me, thank you guys for coming along this journey with me. I actually am about to pack my computer up into my bin and move away to college tomorrow. Uh, this is the last thing I'm doing on my computer at home before I pack it all up. Should be editing, but you know how things are. Thank you guys for going on this journey with me. Season 4 of the HDL. Season 5 will be coming in Gen 9. But I'm going to cut to past me after that game happens for my true final thoughts on the season. I'm going to cut to the final screen as well now. Thank you guys, and to pass me, we go. <sighs> yeah. I'm just upset. I've just been apologizing now. Like, I'm sorry. This was my game to win, and I didn't. Um, I'm sure tomorrow I'm not going to give a fuck, because I still came in second overall. Uh, Like... I still finished second place. I still did way better than I think most people were thinking I was going to do. Uh, I officially made it known that I am a threat in this league. Like people, have, I think, have low key been sleeping, especially after how badly I did last season. So to bounce back after how I did last season, to do as well as I did this season, props to me. I uh, But next season's going to be Gen 9, and... I don't know how much I'm going to keep up with competitive mods in Gen 9 because I'd have to learn it all over again. So I was a little scared that this would be like my last chance for me to have a legitimate shot at winning everything and uh, kind of blew it. All in all, though, I got second place overall. Lost in only one Hoenn finals, which is different for me. I usually don't lose games that close. I usually find a way to win games this close and get washed either way. But that's... uh. Just how the cookie crumbles, I guess. There's a. I, there's not really not much else for me to say. I'm sorry that everything has to end on this somber of a note, and I'm sorry the quality of the recording was probably horrible. Like me just being tilted and annoyed the whole time, or me being like neurotic or whatever. It's uh, yeah. And I'm sure this video, I'm gonna call it right now. This video is gonna take longer to come out. It's gonna be way longer than a week for it to come out. It's probably gonna come out a month after the semifinals video, if I'm being honest, because I'm just not gonna want to watch the game. Editing it is going to be difficult because I'm not gonna want to watch it. So, yeah, uh, it's probably gonna come out late because I'm just not gonna want to watch the replay and like, because I feel the same mood when I watch the replays as when I'm playing the game. Like, I feel that mood again. So I'm going to get into, like, the same headspace I was in, and I'm just going to get all tilted again watching the replay. And I don't want to do that. I want to just move on be like, yo, I got second. I did a really good fucking job. And uh, take that and run with it. But I'm going to have to edit the video. <laughs> uh, maybe throw it off to someone else to edit. I don't know. But, yeah. Season 4 comes to a close with a 1-0 loss in Grand Finals. The Hoboken Holuchas finish second overall. Tyler wins the third season in a row. And that's really it. Um, I went on a good run late. Played two really good playoff games and almost pulled off the greatest postseason run. And probably 
like undisputed for t- a lot of time to come uh postseason run in hdl history but i did not and that just means i have some stuff left to learn and it means uh i have to win in the future but i don't know what gen 9 will hold to be quite honest so we'll see if a uh draft league championship will forever elude me or if i'll catch one in the near future but again gen 9 is next and i don't know what it what it holds so we'll see but um until then thank you guys for watching through this whole season and going on this journey with me obviously my favorite season to have recorded most videos got the farthest and uh it was just a great time so for those that made it all the way and went this entire way with me thank you thank you very much and until next time peace